Hi everyone, um, my name is Lisa Shields and I'm from Rathmines College um, and I did the UDL badge course um, just be, uh, finished just before Christmas, so in December 2020. Um, and what I'd just like to take you through and talk a little bit about today is um, mainly about assessment. So what I decided to do was to offer students um, at least one other way of being assessed. Um, so kind of the plus one approach. So I'm just going to go through kind of the process, my, my thinking behind um, how I put the assessment together and, you know, what the results were and also what the students thought and the feedback that they gave me. So the module I chose, I'm just going on to the next slide and hopefully it's going to flip on there. There we go. So in terms of what the challenge was, um, we were asked as part of the course. So when we were doing the course with the head, um, Trevor and the others that were um, the other facilitators on the course were really emphasizing to us to try to keep it simple, for both us and for the students. So um, what, what I focused on was redesigning just one element of one module. And I picked one UDL guideline. There are lots of checkpoints and guidelines in the UDL as a way of doing things, um, the, the UDL, you know, hymn book, so to speak. Um, and I focused on assessment. So the module I chose was marketing practice level five. And one of the assignments the students have to do is to um, put together a marketing plan assignment, which was typically a word processed document. And I decided to focus on that assessment and offer them um, some other offer them a choice, basically, some other options for how they would um, put that assessment together and how they would present it. Now, my idea was plus one because I wanted to keep it simple um, for them and for me. Um, and I, I was a bit daunted, to be honest. I was saying, gosh, this is going to be a lot more work for me. Um, what can I do kind of to make things um, easier? Now, the reason I chose this assessment was I had done the first assignment with this group and this, um, as was this image here kind of represents how some of them really found the challenge of putting together a word process document. Um, they weren't that used to producing some students in the class kind of um, large volumes of, of written work. And um, some of them weren't familiar with the word, um, the word application. And even though that word processing is one of the modules they do in, um, in their course, in their level five certificates, some of them had only started that, just weren't familiar with the tool. So of what I found when I was um, grading those assignments was really, you know, there were students who had come across as being quite strong in class and really had great ideas, but I wasn't seeing that coming through in their word process document, you know, the, the word document they were submitting. So I decided to choose that assessment for the, sec for the second assignment for this group. I said, okay, we're going to try and do something different, try and make it a little bit easier for people to actually show their strengths um, and basically show what they've learned, you know, um, in a different way. So my whole goal was kind of to try to help to find the hidden strengths because I knew there were learners in that group who participated actually quite well in class. So they would, um, you know, they would participate and, and the, on the Zoom, on, during the Zoom classes, we would do share ideas on Padlet, for example, and they were putting some good ideas across in the chat, but I just wasn't seeing that um, within their first assignment. So I really wanted to try to find it uh, to help them to show me what they had learned. Now, I kind of took a couple of steps. So I'm going to do a sort of a step by step approach of, of how did I go about this? So the first thing I did was I consulted the program module, which was when I started teaching that said to me, go to section 11 of the program module. That's where you're going to find out what you need to produce at the end of the year. Um, and actually, when I went looking in section 11 of this program module, um, I was Quite, I was pleasantly surprised it was a lot more flexible and there was a lot more, you know, ideas that I could implement than I thought. So in section 11 of this program module, it said evidence for the assessment technique may take the form of written, oral, graphic, audio, visual, or actually any combination of those. So I was like, great, okay, we can, we can do a video, we can maybe build a web page, it doesn't have to be a Word document, it can be, you know, it can be an audio file. So it looks like there was plenty of flexibility. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, producing an assignment that was going to meet the requirements of the QQI um, module. 
Now, I had a few ideas, but I thought um, I'd find out what the students thought first. So I did a quick poll. Um, so this group I was working with, I was seeing them, you know, four times a week on Zoom. And we used to do polls at the beginning, you know, how are things today? Just, you know, um, just try to kind of take the temperature of the room type stuff at the start of class. So I did a poll um, asking the learners if they could submit their second assignment in a different way, which way would they prefer? So I gave them three choices. The first one, the first one I called the video, which being honest, kind of scared them off because like as as um, Elaine was saying, getting the students to turn their videos in class is a challenge. So we're expecting them to actually produce a video with where they where I could see their face and see them talking was not something they were keen on. But we um, came up with a compromise where they would do a screen recording and I didn't mind if they kept their video off, they would talk me through um, the assignment. So they could do a video. I suggested they could do a mini website. Uh, we were using WordPress. That's a, a tool I was showing them how to use for the marketing module, or we could do a poster or infographic using Canva. So um, they um, gave me their views on that poll and basically plus one became plus two. So what I thought I was only going to be doing one extra type of assessment, I ended up having to do two extra because there was no clear winner. So the two options that we went with we um, were the presentation with the screen recording. Again, cameras could be off. I didn't um, mandate that I had to keep the camera on. They could produce the mini website or they could go with the Word document, the traditional route. So we had three options altogether. Once I demanded the brief um, and sent it out, I probably did spend a good bit of time and being honest, maybe not enough, um, explaining the new tools. So, you know, explaining how to record yourself on Zoom, looking at WordPress. Um, and we spent a bit of time going through the, the options. And the result was that I had I had about 20 learners in the class. So I had two students, just 10 percent in the presentation with the screen recording. I had a bigger group, 30 percent who did the website and then 60 percent did stick with the traditional form. They, they went with their Word document. So I had about um, 40 percent that went with the alternative option. Now, probably the biggest challenge that I faced with this group was the website. So looking back on it, I probably I didn't realize how much time I would need to show them how to use WordPress. And I did that too quickly. So what I ended up having to do was, you know, do tutorials afterwards and um, to help them do separate things on, on WordPress. So I kind of learned that was one of the things I learned that for the next time to do a bit more groundwork in terms of showing the students a new tool before I send them off um, to work on the assignment. What you live, you learn. Um, I also did a survey at the end, ask students what they thought um, and if they had been a positive or a, a challenging experience for them. And here are some of the quotes that um, students came back with. So one of the things I really liked was that they had they, they could choose, you know, they had a bit of, um, they had a bit of, they were independent. There was, they were able to choose, choose which way they completed their assignment. Um, they liked being able to learn, the fact they learned something new. Um, this quote from one of the students, um, he said, having the choice to submit my work as a presentation that I could talk through was a great option for me. It just worked better rather than having to type everything up. And this particular student was one of the students who I knew understood the marketing concept but just that wasn't coming across um, in the word process document. They love designing the website as well. I mean, there were some talented graphic designers in there and it was fantastic to be able to see them show their strengths you know, in terms of visual presentation and they loved using Canva. So um, those two tools, and they worked very well for marketing because you know, in marketing, um, graphic design is something that, that you're, you're gonna um, come across and need some skills in. So the whole thing kind of um, gelled quite well together. Um, so overall, it was definitely positive um, for me. I would say, having not known a lot about UDL, I really, I, I do see the huge benefits of it. And I suppose what's, what I'd like to kind of convey is that having tried it once, even though I did find challenges, I definitely have um, learned from my mistakes and I've been able to implement it in other modules. So I did that redesign and um, it was before Christmas, it was in December. But since then, the modules I taught in this semester, I've used um, the screen recording option for two other assignments. So I started doing that with spreadsheet students, where instead of typing up um, the project in level five spreadsheets, you have to type up quite a 
detailed word process document. They did that as a video for me, a screen recording. Um, and take up has increased, actually, I suppose I'm getting better at showing people how to do it and they're getting more used to doing that option. Um, I introduced mini websites for digital marketing. Again, quite a good fit because it's um, for digital marketing students, but it was with the same student cohort and I got a much bigger take up on the websites in the second semester because they were just more familiar with it, I guess. And, um, and they really they really seem to value um, having that, that bit of autonomy. Um, and offering individual choice certainly seems um, to work. So I spoke with one of the students who I think really embraced UDL, and this is just a quote from, this is one of my students in the marketing group this year. Um, and I really saw the, you know, the great results for this student. He was able to show me his strength. So um, he was one of the people who did the presentation with screen recording. And he was able to put his, his uh, ideas across verbally. And then he also took, he took that a step further in his um, e-portfolio, which we did this semester by embedding audio files. Um, and this is just, you know, shows how he said it was a lot easier for him to explain his ideas and just talking through the project worked well. Um, and, you know, when I listened to his, I have to say, when I listened to his work and other students' work, um, as I think um, one of the questions earlier, uh, one of the people asked a question earlier was saying, you know, the quality really comes through. You can really, really see that those students are able to show their strengths. Um, yeah, so that's that's my that was my UDL redesign. Um, hopefully, I got across some of the ideas there that I implemented.